All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Furious video with Fat Phil, and I have my updated farming guide for 2023. Before we go into this, there are timestamps, so if you guys want to skip this little bit of the intro here where I just explain what this farming guide is preparing you for, I completely understand. I just think it's important for you to hear some of the explanation before going into the guide and trying to judge and understand. Like, I need you to understand. With all the changes to this game, with Rise of the Empire territory battles, with raids being what they are now, you need to adjust your roster to prepare yourself to be a lot more focused on being a member of a guild. Like before it was, just get Spreemlet or Kylo Ren and you can solo all the raids. Now that it's one raid at a time and that everybody's getting the same rewards, you want to build the teams that are going to be able to get you into the guilds that are doing the Crate Dragon raid because that is the best raid possible. If you haven't noticed already, you need to be in a guild that can do 17 million damage total. That's 340,000 per player. And this guide, early on, by the time that you get a few things, early on you're going to be able to score that in this raid. So without any further ado, let's jump into our guide. As always, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Comment down below. We are trying to hit 5,000 subscribers. Let's do it. All right. The first thing you need to start with is your Imperial Troopers. With... Harris and Dylan now being on a hard node, you need to start with Imperial Troopers first. These are the five characters that I recommend. Your fifth slot is optional. I know a lot of people would bump Range Trooper out because he's on a hard node and Stark is in the Cantina. I can respect that. But Range is far superior to Colonel Stark. So these are the five that I recommend. Now your core three here are Veers, Piet, and Dark Trooper, right? Those are your core three. These two are really, really good. Stark isn't bad, it's just the assists from Range Trooper are significantly better. So that's your initial team. As you're building those guys, you want to be thinking about your Commander Luke Skywalker unlock. So your five Empire characters, your Imperial Troopers, can get you R2-D2. Old Ben and Luke Skywalker are in the Cantina. Stormtrooper Han is in the Cantina store himself. And Princess Leia is in the Arena store. So uh, you farm, you use the stores to kind of unlock some of these characters you're building these guys up, I think that's a, the smartest thing to do, right? Then, because you get your Rebels, you'll be able to unlock Emperor Palpatine. It may take you a little bit longer to get Palpatine because the Phoenix Squadron was really good, but that event isn't too difficult, and I think with a good Commander Luke Skywalker, R2-D2, you know, a few of these guys, you're going to be able to get through that event. And then Darth Vader, you're going to get through achievements, right? You'll get him through achievements, and you'll have the makings of another Empire team, I would recommend bare minimum you get Grand Moff Tarkin for his capital ship and Mara Jade to kind of go hand in hand with Emperor Palpatine. I think those four characters kind of make up that most bang for your buck for the Empire, right? Tarkin is a fleet commander. He's also good in the Emperor Palpatine lineup. Vader is a pilot. He's, he's just so good. He's a solo artist. And then you've got Emperor Palpatine, Mara Jade, one of the best duos in the game, really complement each other well. So... This is your early, these are your starting, you know, early things. Obviously, with your raid currency, you want to be farming Han Solo first, right? Get Han Solo, you can use him with your Commander Luke, and I would at least unlock 3PO and Chewie. Bare minimum, I would just go and unlock him. He is a hard node character. Just bare minimum, unlock him when you can. You know, obviously, I know he's a little bit later in the game, but when you can, just unlock him. That's going to be the best thing you can do. He will transform that team into something it isn't. I wouldn't, you don't need to take him crazy high right away because hard knows you're going to be doing a lot of other things. But if you can at least unlock him, you will be, you'll be setting yourself up for success. So then as you're moving through the cantina, you get your commander Luke Rex done. You want to focus on getting your characters like Geonosian Soldier, right? Who's a very early node, right? Cantina 1A, one of the first things. And then Geonosian Brood Alpha is later on. So as soon as you unlock this, Right, you can try and get him to max level. This is a huge change. I used to say they were skippable, but and then you add Padme if you get them. Um, I still would. Uh, Genosian Brood Alpha and like Poggle, you could argue are skippable, but Sun Fog, Genosian Spy, and Genosian Soldier, I think you really want to farm for their ships. Their ships are very easy to get. They're going to fit really well into the Malevolence Fleet, which we will get to, but you will farm that before Negotiator. So. They're just that, they're really good characters. And I think that without the Phoenix Squadron, you build these guys earlier. I think before in my guide with the Phoenix being there, it took up a little bit too much time in the cantina to try and get you Commander Luke that now 
I think you can take that time and get these guys. So I 100% recommend these Geonosians. I think they're just, you know, they're still skippable, just not nearly as what I would have said before. Like, I think they're a lot, there's a reason they're this early on is because of how good their ships are. So as you're working on your Geonosians, right, you need to start thinking about your bounty hunters. We want to be working towards executor. That's going to be the goal. These are the four bounty hunters that you're going to kind of start, I'd say, investing some gear into first. Django, not as much as these three because he's not an executor wreck. However, what you want to do is get these guys. These guys are all pilots. Django Fett, you're going to get because he's on the same note as the Houndstooth, as you'll see here, right? If I come here, there's Django Fett. So you're going to get Django as a consequence of getting the Houndstooth. You want to be farming all of their ships as well. Again, Boba Fett's, it's in the Fleet Arena store and it has a hard node in the Fleet uh, node. And then if we go to our Cad Bane, that is on a node with, I believe that's Droidica. So you'll get Droidica, you'll get the Xanadu Blood, and then Cad Bane's a very easy Galactic War currency farm. So these are all very, you know, characters that are very good, very easy to get them. I mean, Bosk is hard node, but his hard node and the Houndstooth are both very doable to get. And again, Xanadu Blood, same thing. It's hard node, but we can focus on them because we've, we're building to that point, right? So we want to be focusing here early. Then once you get those guys, you want to think about Best Armor Mando next. The Best Armor Mando, very easy to obtain, right? So Mandalorian, he's on a very early node, right? Not a lot of energy, and he's in two locations, although this 5E is going to take you a while to get there, so I wouldn't really worry too much. Um, but your, your Grief Karga and IG-11 share a node together, and then he's also in fleets as well. Now, you're not going to get here, but again, I'm just making, you know, giving you all the information possible. And then Cara Dune... She is also, again, another hard node, right? A lot of hard nodes here, but with the two times drops, it's going to be easier to get there. And then Queel actually shares a node with Ty Bomber. So you're going to be farming this node till you get Ty Bomber to seven star. Because once you get Best Armor Mando, right, you're going to be able to probably get Chewbacca then, right? So you get Best Armor Mando, you're going to have enough bounty hunters to attempt the Chewbacca node. If you're investing gear in these guys, it's not going to be that difficult. And you can work on your executor, right? Which you need Best Armor Mando for. So you've done Quill, you get your bet, you start working on executor, which is where you need the tie bomber at seven star anyway. So these are the wrecks. Look, I know a lot of you are probably sitting there thinking, like, gosh, that's a lot to do at once. It's a lot easier than it seems because you're going to be building these characters up over time. It's all leading one thing into the other, right? The like Commander Luke, Chewbacca, they're both legendary characters with very easy unlocks, especially with what you're building early. Han Solo is a raid character. Remember, 3PO and Chewie, I just said, get him to like three star. Two, three star, you don't need him much more than that. You really just want his unique ability, right? That's what he's there for. So you get your executor here. It does require two relic eights. Remember, what you're going to want to do is use your um, guild, the new guild currency, right? Anything you're getting there, throw that into era magnifiers, because impulse detectors, you can either buy with crystals or you can even craft them if necessary. So I think you want to use those air magnifiers, get 40 of them, start working on the impulse detectors because everything else is going to be a lot easier to obtain. Um, I think that by doing these things early, you're going to have teams to at least compete in GAC. You'll have some decent fleets. So I think Executor is the best first farm. I still believe that. I think it's going to get you those fleet crystals, which are so vital to your growth. And... In the Crate Dragon Raid, Boba Fett and Cad Bane are both characters you can utilize because they're Hut Cartel. Best Armor Mando is a Mandalorian along with Mando himself. So now you have a group of, you know, bounty hunter, or, you know, group of scoundrels who all can benefit from each other's score points in that raid. So that's the first, you know, few characters. And even Jango Fett is also a Mandalorian. So you've got, you know, a way to at least score in that raid early. You might not be able to do crazy amounts of damage, but you could at least get into a guild that's doing some because you have some characters to score. Once you get your executor, we want to focus on Jedi Knight Revan, right? Getting Jedi Knight Revan is going to be so important early. It's another team for the Crate Dragon Raid. Jedi Knight Revan is an, am an amazing character. Um, it's really what I'd like. I'd, I highly recommend this. And a lot of people may be wondering, well, how am I going to get Grandmaster Yoda if... You know, you, I'm not going to have enough Jedi characters, right? So you're going to have three here between Bastila, Jovi, and Revan. You'll have Jedi Knight Anakin, right, as a fourth. That fifth slot can really be anyone. However, this is where we're kind of get, getting down into something. We're going to scroll up here for a second. I have this so, so optional here. 
And you have this Hera, right? You have your Phoenix Squadron. Well, Kanan is very easy to obtain, right? He's in your squad arena store. So you could get him to seven star. Ezra is in the Cantina, right? Very easy to get. So you could go and get Ezra as your fifth Jedi there, right? So Ezra, Kanan fit. But Hera's on this hard node. My recommendation is that you just kind of fit her in when you can. Maybe it's an every other day thing, but in the background, this team, you want to be building them up, right? Just keep that in the back of your heads, in the background, farming that team. All right, we're going to keep going along here. So now you've built Jedi Knight Revan. It's time to start thinking about your galactic bounties for Wampa, Rebel Officer Leia Organa, and Han Solo if you don't already have him seven star, right? Now, if you want to be efficient with your guild event currency, right? You want to be really efficient. You don't use any of it for Wampa. You just get them through galactic bounties. Realistically, I think if you want to get to Rebel Officer Leia Organa sooner via those galactic bounties, you're going to spend it on Wampa, get through him, and then worry about your get one for Hermit Yoda. And then, you know, Rebel Officer Leia Organa goes to galactic bounties, right? Um, galactic bounties, this event is very easy with bounty hunters, especially if they're at relic levels. And before that, you're going to be able to start doing this right away. Highly, highly, highly recommend you do this as soon as you can. It's why I build bounty hunters so early because they can complete these events to earn those extra character shards to boost you further and further in the game. So 100% recommend doing this, right? Now you're building these characters because we want to get to Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. So again, you've got your Ewoks. Remember, you've got to think of this guide in terms of, you know, you're not just doing like, okay, I've got Hermit Yoda, Wampa. Okay, I'm ready to start Ewoks. They already need to be in process. Just they have become more of the focus of your gearing, maybe a Zeta just on Chirpa. I have a guide for the C-3PO event to do this with low gear. Um, but yeah, you want to do these guys. You got to get them for C-3PO. And at that point, you're going to have the full Commander Luke Skywalker team. Again, you don't need, need the full Chupio right away. He can be just somebody that you're farming. Again, kind of like the Hera. Maybe him and Hera, you kind of rotate, alternate, or you think of them as this extra thing you're going to do just to build your roster slowly and slowly, right? You, you kind of build these pieces one at a time. You figure out those little side farms. Something I'd highly recommend doing when you can. So again, in 3PO and Chewie, he is on a later node, but it's worth mentioning to try and get him, get to that as early as you can and at least unlock him, right? You don't need to continually do that all the time, but I would at least unlock him. And this team just, it kicks. It is, this is a team that just slaps so well. Once you get this team right here, right? Once you get your C-3PO, you start working on those Jedi Knight, Luke, Rex, the other ones. Darth Vader is a requirement, but you'll have him from Executor, so you don't need to worry. Then Lando, Rebel Officer Laragana, Captain Han. Again, you're going to be fine, right? You'll, you'll have these characters. You'll be able to do what you need to do. And the world will be a happy place. You get your Jedi Knight, Luke. Which then leads you into getting your Han Solo. So you've got to start thinking about Han Solo to Relic 8. That's just going to help your Millennium Falcon. And I also think it's just something you need to be thinking about early because we're going for Job of the Hut. You'll already have Boba, 8, Boba Fett at Relic 8 from your executor. So he's done for, um, you know, get this executor farm, right? Like you don't need to worry about, you know, doing anything extra with him. And then you'll get Fennec. And the reason I recommend Fennec, I think she slots really well into some of those bounty hunter teams. At the stage that you'll be using her, you'll probably still be facing people in Grand Arena that sh there'll be teams that she can solo. So really recommend getting Fennec early and you've got to get the Outrider. So make sure that you are farming Outrider and at least have Dash Rendar unlocked by this point so that you can get that ship. It needs to be seven stars. So you need to at least have Dash Rendar at like two star unlock and then get the Outrider to seven stars. So start doing that as soon as you can. Again, it's one of those farms that you just, you've got to think about, you've got to throw it in here. Then you build your Hut Cartel characters, who again, guess what? You're using these guys in the raid. Aura Singh is up here. I like Aura as a flex option for your bounty hunters on offense. It's a very easy contract to hit. So it's just something that you can build her up early. If you want to move her down, you can because you want to build these characters. And even though it's painful, all five of these characters right here, you can use in the Crate Dragon raid. So now by this point, you're going to be able to score significantly more in the Crate Dragon raid. You're building ready for Jabba the Hutt. It's, they're fantastic, fantastic characters. And in that raid, like even like Jawas at low gear, which we're going to go over to our optional here. These guys right here are almost hitting 300,000 damage for me in the Crate Dragon raid. That's not that hard to do, right? This is, this is like in terms of overall investment in the game, this is nothing, right? These guys are lower than my, like 
Jawa is a relic requirement for Jabba anyway, but these guys, the, the, the gear here is probably lower than my Phoenix Squadron is. I mean, it's just, it's, it's absurd, right? So, shockingly low here. We'll talk about Padme then. Let's get through, let's get Jabba. And we're, then we're going to touch on Padme there. So, we're down here and we're getting Jabba. Now, once you get, you know, your last thing you'll do for Jabba is C-3PO to Relic 7 because you just, you don't need him. And then you've got Jabba. And the reason you're getting Jabba, one, he's like an automatic 1.2 million just with his Rex in the raid. He's the Smuggler's 2 run, the Smuggler's Run 2 event in the, for the mods so worth it to get like it just it is unbelievable how amazing he is for that event um the mod slicing materials there i mean everything he's so good and his requirements yes it seems like a lot but because you have that executor early you're getting all those crystals from fleet arena i think Jabba's gonna you're really gonna be able to hone in on Jabba and do well this guide is designed to say you know what yes you need to do these things but uh, like, uh, like the requirements for Jabba outside of these three characters, you know, outside of maybe these four characters right here, Fennec, uh, Kors Light Leia, Kersantin, and Skiffguard, none of the rest of these are really that hard to gear because they've been in the game for so long. So like, I, I really can recommend that you can get Jabba pretty easily because up to that point, you haven't really invested all that crazy gear into these like new, new characters who need crazy amounts of Kyrotex yet. So this will be your first real Kyrotech intensive farm. And I think that's okay. So you get Jabba. So I haven't talked about your other ships yet. And that's just, you know, intentional. I'm trying to paint the picture of, hey, you know, first focus Jabba. Your order for ships here. So I have General Grievous first. You want to get the Malevolence to five star. With your Guild of Ed Currency too, you want to be focusing on getting that Malevolence to five star. Then you're going to switch over to the Negotiator and get it to seven stars and then finish off your Malevolence. That's going to be the order that you go here. The reason you're going in this order is that the Malevolence at five stars is a far superior ship in terms of what it's going to be able to counter for you than the Negotiator at five stars. So Malevolence will just give you that offensive edge that even at five star, it's going to be very capable of competing. The other thing to keep in mind, right, is that you've built the Geonosians and they don't need a crazy amount of gear to be good in this fleet. But in the ships, when you go here to your Separatists, your Hyena Bomber and Vulture Droid are what make up your Malevolence fleet, and they're crewless ships. So you only need to invest in four characters for this fleet to work. Your three Geonosians and your General Grievous. And then you've got Hyena Bomber and Vulture Droid. I think that is so important for how good this fleet is, and that's why I have it first. Because your Galactic Republic requires significantly more gear. There's only one crewless ship. You need Plo Koon. You know, you need Anakin fives ahsoka rex like you you know and then general kenobi like you just you need more characters than you do for the malevolence fleet so 100 percent get that malevolence to five star work on your negotiator and that's going to be happening as soon as you can get guild event currency too right as soon as you get get to start focusing on those things i just have them down here for when i thought it made sense in terms of the farming you could have them a lot earlier but the concept is still the same that you as soon as you get get to that's what you're focusing on Thrawn is down here as well. Like, when do you get Thrawn? Again, as I said, with this so, so optional up here. Whoops. Clicking all over the place, guys. With the so, so optional, right? Whenever you get this Phoenix, just go and try and get Thrawn. Whenever you finish off Hera, get Thrawn. And that, you know, with Sabine, at least just unlock her so you can attempt that Chimera mission and get Chimera. I think that will benefit you so much. That Players nowadays, because Thrawn is so much harder to get with Hera moving to a hard node. I think players who have Thrawn and the Chimera are going to be significantly better if they can get him early. And I think this is a good place to kind of have him at that like maybe get Jabba and then you finish off your stuff and you go unlock Thrawn. I mean, I, you know, just, just thinking out loud here, guys, That's this is going to be super, super key for you. So then once you're kind of done with Jabba, right, you kind of get some of these things, right, you're working along, you want to work on getting your Old Republic slash Sith Empire team up for Darth Revan and Malak. You'll already have your Old Republic needed for Jedi Knight Revan, so now it's time to go ahead and focus on getting Malak. Malak is very easy to obtain. You don't need a lot of gear for either side of that journey, and I think that they will, one, give you additional teams for the crate raid, right? Yippee. But two, Malak just like represents so much in this game early on. He's very difficult to take out. 
you do need guild event currency one and that's why he's down here significantly lower that like you've spent your get one right on hermit yoda and wampa and you've probably built up a stockpile again right because you stockpile it and you're going in and you're getting malik so that would be my advice is that like you just you don't you almost don't spend get one for a very long time until you're ready to get these characters i've seen other people who just kind of wait and that's okay too if you really, really want to just get Malak to seven stars right away, which is your prerogative, right? You can do that. You just don't spend that Guild Event Currency one. It's something I've seen a lot of players do, and I can't fault them for it because it does make a lot of sense. So after you get your Malak, I think you go and get Starkiller. This is a huge change. I A lot of people here, right, are going to say, oh, this is a huge change. Why are we doing this? And I noticed, I, I, we'll get to Padme, sorry. I'm, we'll circle there. The reason you're getting Starkiller is because at this point, Darth Talon can slot into that Sith Empire team. You will already have the Outrider 7-star from Jabba, so Dash Rendar fits in nicely. Mara Jade is going with your Empire character, so you've probably built up a little bit at this point. And then Kyle Katarn, he's got a really good ship. I've seen a lot of people invest early in Kyle and get, like, super good with ships. I just think if you're going Executor, it's not quite as important, but his ship is really good early game. I think it's going to give you a lot of tools early. So you build this, right? Because you get Starkiller, and then you're just going to get your Emperor Palpatine, Visus Mar, and Old Ben up to snuff. You do that to kind of flesh out that full Starkiller team and get the most bang for your buck. So I want to pause here for a second and go back over to Padme. I have this thing that says only if Geos. You've got to figure out when to get Padme, right? You're going to have to figure out when to fit her in. She's a fantastic character. If you don't end up farming Geonosians early, I think the ability for you to get Padme is going to like just shrink. And then it's going to be a lot later on that you're going to be able to get her. So if you do get those Geonosians early, I think you go right for Padme. I, I don't think there's anything better you can do for your account than like go and get Padme. Because you'll spend your raid currency to get General Kenobi at some point. You'll get Ahsoka, right? Because she's kind of given to you. She's a pilot, fantastic. And Jin and I, Anakin, I mean, so good. So you can kind of build the starter of that Padme team. There'll be a lot of characters you can slot in that fifth slot, right? Um, early on, it's just one of those teams that you're going to set down. You might not have crazy gear on them, but you're going to have enough to at least make them annoying. So that kind of team just fits in at whatever point. You'll kind of see that you'll get these points where it's like, okay, maybe I do it here or, you know, here, here. That You'll, you'll figure out where it fits in. Um, I just kind of wanted to mention her, right, and bring it up that, that is a team that you're going to have to build at some point, right? So now that you've gotten these characters up to par, right? You're getting them up to par. Then I have the big three here, right? Your big three conquest characters. I would assume by the time that you've gotten like these characters, you're building these things, you're probably getting closer and closer to 4 million galactic power. Between Executor, between Jabba, you know, all these other upgrades, you're probably getting close to, or at least thinking about, you know, conquest units. You want to get Darth Malgus first. Darth Malgus is probably the most impactful conquest unit in terms of what it takes to utilize him. That he's a Sith Empire character. The Sith Empire very, very accessible here. So you get Darth Malgus, I think that's step one. Commander Tano and Maul is going to really depend on if you have a solid Padme team, you get Commander Tano, right? If you don't have a solid Padme team at the point that you're unlocking these characters, Maul might be your answer because he's a Mandalorian who... Guess who else is Mandalorian? Candorus, who you use to get Malak. You're going to get your Mandalorian from... Let's go all the way back up here, guys, right? We gotta go back up. Your um, Best Armor Mando is a Mandalorian character. Jango Fett is a Mandalorian character. And even, like, OG Mando is a man has a Mandalorian tag. So you're going to have some Mandalorians that you can use with Maul when you need to. And so I think that he could be worth it if you don't really have that Padme team. It's not a terrible idea to get Maul because those, that Mandalorian team is really good. If you, I would say if you have Padme, Commander Tana right away. Otherwise, I think Maul might be a little bit better of an option for people because you're going to have those Mandalorians built from all the other farms that you've done. And guess what? Mandalorians are needed in the Crate Dragon raid and Maul makes that possible. He makes them so much better. So really think that's worthwhile to do. All right, so then you've, you're kind of, you, you, you built old Ben, right? So now you're kind of back up here again. You took this break just to talk about conquest units. 
So now you, you're back up here, right? You got Star Killer. You you get these characters up to par, finishing with Old Ben because you're going to start building for Jedi Master Luke. Because you've built Jedi Knight Luke, you've already got a lot of the requirements for Jedi Master Luke done. So you need to remember that there's the JTR requirement here and that R2-D2, right? Like, you know, he's a wreck as well. So, you know, you, you got those two. But then you build your Rebel Scum, right? Your Mon Mothma, Wedge Antilles, Biggs, and then you're going to have Lando, who's also a Rebel Fighter, and then Kyle Katarn, who you farm for Starkiller, guess what? He's also a Rebel Fighter. So now you've got this Rebel Fighter team, right? Um, I think that's really, really solid. And then Princess Leia just kind of, you know, fits in there, and that's going to get you Jedi Master Luke. I think that this farming guide, what it's leading you to is that you want to build pieces that kind of flow together. One of the big things in this game that I think we often miss is that, yes, it sounds like a lot to get Jedi Knight Luke, but Jedi Knight Luke opens two doors. He opens the door to Jabba, opens the door to Jedi Master Luke. The Executor is opening the door for Chewbacca, which leads to Jedi Knight Luke, right? And the Millennium Falcon. So each of these things has kind of flowed one into the other, and you're just sprinkling in that little like Old Republic team, right, to get your, you know, to get Malak, right? You're kind of sprinkling them in at two different points. And by the time you get Jedi Master Luke, I think you're going to have a really solid roster. Because is Jedi Master Luke as good as like Jedi Master Kenobi? No. But you've already gotten like halfway to the finish line by getting Jedi Knight Luke that you may as well finish the job because you're that close. So many players are going to farm Jabba and then not go immediately into Jedi Master Luke and spend all this other time getting another Galactic Legend that... What will happen is the person who goes Jabba into JML is going to spend less time getting two GLs than the person who's going to get their second as, say, like a Jedi Master Kenobi or something. And then, because you've got two Galactic Legends, you're going to be better at all game modes, earning more rewards, and guess what? That's going to lead you to get your next one faster. So I think you've got to really do this and get Jedi Master Luke. Oh, man. So now comes your decision time. What do you do next? And this is where I'd say it starts getting a little bit muddied in the guide that I'm almost forecasting too far out ahead of people. But I wanted to give you two options that I think are still really, really smart and will improve your roster at this point without breaking the bank and without causing you like ridiculous headaches, right? And it's Supreme Leader Kylo Ren and General Skywalker. Supreme Leader Kylo Ren has the cheapest requirements for a Galactic Legend. Cheapest of gear, cheapest of relics. It, he is just so, so important. And the finalizer uses a lot of ships that the executor uses as unlocks. So very, very easy to get this ship or to get Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. The reason he's third now is simply because of how easy it is to go from Jabba to JML. That's the big thing. Kylo definitely lost value because of the crate Dragon Raid that you can't use the First Order, and he was the king of raids. He's still very good in PvE, particularly the new Rise of the Empire territory battles. But I think that he needs to kind of take that step back because you need to get those other things early. So then you want to get, you know, it's decision between these two. And the reason I have those two, Kylo, obviously a better character than General Skywalker, but General Skywalker is going to lead you towards a better fleet. So for the sake of this video, we're going to go for your Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. You're going to get your fleet ready, right? You're going to build the ships for these guys, and you're going to build your First Order fleet. I think that's the most important step. I see a lot of players make the mistake of they go in and they, you know, they build like the easy requirements first, or they're like, oh, like Sith Trooper is so, so good. I need to get him. Like, no, 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 no. Build your pilots first. The, at this point, you want to be building these pilots first because they're that important to the game. Then your last Rex, right? Ember Palpatine, you've probably already done some investment in, so you could bump him up if you want. Me personally, I'd kind of like, he's he's good, but your Mara Jade will be better, right? You'll have some other characters to kind of lift him up a bit. And then Sith Trooper, First Order Executioner, they're not pilots, so they don't really belong on the list. And then Veteran Smuggler Han Solo is kind of just sitting there, you know, you gotta get him, it's unfortunate, but you would have farmed him to get Jedi Training Rey, so it's really just relics at that point. And, you know, that leaves you off with Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And I think that's going to be awesome, right? The teenager age, right? You get Kylo. I think you're moving, you're moving along. At this point, then, it's all about getting General Skywalker. And there's the teams you need for General Skywalker. 
So you're going to build your Padme up, right? Which you'd have Padme at this point because you're either getting ready for this event or you built your Geonosians. So, um, you know, Shakti, General Kenobi, C-3PO, Ahsoka, by this point, you're going to have all those characters, right? You know, like the, your raid currency, you're going to have enough of it to have Kenobi and Treya at this point. Um, you know, General Grievous kind of fitting in, right? Um, they're optional mandatory. General Skywalker is nothing without the 501st. And the Separatist droids you're building down here with Asajj, she doesn't have any leadership that benefits these guys. So you, that's why you build General Grievous at this point and at least put, you know, when you unlock that malevolence, you can just get like uh, General Grievous to like gear 12. When you get to this point, you know, put him, get, get him to like Relic 3. I'm not going to say you take him to Relic 7 right away, even though he's amazing at Relic 7. You don't need to do that right away. Um, I would just get that team up and running because you're going to have him, like you're going to have these guys invested in, may as well invest in your General Grievous. So then you get General Skywalker, right? The better general. Um, my recommendation for your clone trooper levels, I had all of mine at Relic 5. Now that we're... That was because I needed them for the challenge pit raid. I think Relic 3 would be fine for your clones. I don't really use them in Rise of the Empire even when I can. I just don't use them. So... I don't know. I you know you could take them higher if you really want, but like Relic Three would be fine with them. General Skywalker is definitely a Relic Seven for me. He's just one of those characters that like demands Relic Seven, right? Just he's so good. Um, so again, you could argue to go General Skywalker before Kylo because this will get you a better negotiator fleet between your General Kenobi, Ahsoka, um, Rex, and Fives, and then your Jedi Knight Anakin. I mean, you'll build him up just because you can, but. It's definitely one of those situations, I think, that you could go either way, and I think both will benefit you. So, you know, that's that, right? So now, like, you think at this point you're going to have your executor fleet, a first order fleet, you've got an empire fleet, you've got a separatist fleet, you've got a rebel fleet. You've got, like, five solid fleets there, right? Like, what you're missing is a, like, is your profundity, right? Which, you know, whatever, like, that's, we're not quite ready for that yet at this point in the game. Um resistance fleet right not quite there yet and then your empire fleet will kind of be in its you know infancy i would say here you, you might have some of those ships at you know relic levels like uh like the tie bomber will be seven star tie fighter pilot tie advanced but like your emperor shuttle may need some working on and stuff and obviously leviathan we just don't know what the wrecks are yet but my assumption is that most players won't be ready for that even at this point with the fury class interceptor being what it's going to be and whatever the other requirements are, I just I think it might be a little bit too on game, but who knows? More updates to the guide as always. It's evolving. So once you get General Skywalker or Kylo, you're getting to this point where you have three Galactic Legends. You're probably looking at guilds that are starting to do Rise of the Empire consistently and getting further while doing it. Right? The, I think a lot of guilds may do Rise of the Empire, but really not get significantly far you're not making significant progress yet i think as you get to this point where you've got three galactic legends you've got a couple of you got star killer general skywalker malex like i think it's time you think about inquisitors right you want to get grand inquisitor this will get you two solid empire ships between the tie interceptor and the scythe which yes they're conquest units but you think you're constantly making that progress towards them right that you're going to go you're going to get there eventually so you're going to do this for your guild, right? You've got to do it for the guild, start earning those Reva shards. Again, Relic 7 is a lot to ask for for these guys. I completely understand that. And that's why I kind of have them here. That It's kind of this break of like, if you really want to do something for your guild, this is when I would do it. Because after you get this, it's really time to start thinking about, you know, you, your end game Galactic Legends and other like things, like your Cal Kestis, your Afras, Profundity, Again, you guys know my Galactic Legend order. With Jabba going first, I think you go Jabba, JML, Supreme Leader, Kylo Ren. Because Kylo is so cheap to get that it's just it's so worth it to fit him in there. And then I'd get Kenobi and then Lord Vader. Um, that way you're kind of saving some of your Relic 8 materials from Rise of the Empire, from, you know, the Crate Dragon Raid, getting ready for these guys. I just, I can't see... I could not in my... Like, I could not think that by the time you're done with Jabba, you go, you've got an executor, you've gotten Jabba, you're, you're getting JML. Would you really have the resources available to go for two Relicates or four Relicates? Probably not. At least, 
Not without sacrificing other areas that I think by getting Kylo, you'll be able to stomach that and be able to get there. So that's why I would do that, get in that order. So this is the order I would go in. I think Sith Eternal, as I've said before, by the time you're done with all these other things, Sith Eternal is going to be so easy to get, right? It's just going to be like a boop, done with Sith Eternal. At this point, I mean, like I said earlier, even at the point of the decision between General Skywalker and Kylo, I think the guide starts getting muddied because I'm almost forecasting too far away. But if I was saying right now, like, hey, this is kind of the way I would go, you're going to do like Jedi Master Kenobi, then you might get Raddus, then you might go Lord Vader, then you might get Aphra, or Sith Eternal, like you just kind of break these up in your GLs. And maybe you go in other orders, who knows? But, you know, I think that's where you kind of leave off, right? Is you find these areas between some of these farms that you build up other things, which is where this optional tab comes in, right? That you kind of, okay, you build up your Phoenix at some point to get Thrawn, right? I talked about Padme, right? Your Jawas for the Crate Dragon Raid, it doesn't take much gear, and again, I mean, seven, this is nothing. 74,000 power, guys. Like, that's, that's, that's pitiful, right? That's, that's just a joke. You could also do something like your Iden Troopers, right? This is, a not, this is not a bad team to farm. Especially with how good TIE Defender is, I could see a lot of players thinking about, hey, you know what? Maybe we get Iden Versio. Um, my, my recommendation with a team like this is it's a passion project that you just, you have to sacrifice something and say, you know what, maybe I'm not going to build, I don't know, maybe I'm not going to build Starkiller and, or maybe I'm going to skip Phoenix completely and I'm just going to worry about getting Iden Versio. I don't care about Thrawn. I want Iden. Like those are the decisions you're going to have to make and whatever you do, you're going to have to live with. So just, you know, I, I, I don't want to say that it's a mistake to farm this team because they're a great team. Just know what you're committing to when you do it. That would maybe be a better way to say it. Your Night Sisters, this is another just solid team. Again, they're good for assault battles. They're one of those teams that, like, you're going to get Asajj from, you know, for the Separatist thing, right? Then, like, Daka, Zombie, Talzin, um, none of them are, like, super difficult to get anywhere, right? Like, I think Zombie, you get through the one event, you can earn, like, random shards for her and Night Sister Spirit. And then Marin, right, is she on a node now? I think she is. She on a node. She's not on a node yet. So wherever she goes, depends where she ends up. But this is a team that you could definitely farm up without, you know, like this gear right here is getting me wins and conquest right now. Now I get the Relic 5 DACA, but trust me, like it's worth it. But this is one of those teams you fit in at just a passion project point, right? The, okay, I'm going to build this and I'm going to bite the bullet. And I'm going to say the same thing for Dash Rendar here. When you get Dash, right, when you need him for that profundity or when you're, you know, Star Killer stuff, this is another team that you can think about building you know, Nest, Vandor, L3. And then I have young Lando there just because he is a pilot for that Lando Falcon. It would just make it a little bit better. Um, again, there's so many other things you can put in this optional tab, right? And again, like you'll look and you'll see that, you know, in this updated guide, I mean, like I'm not listing out all the requirements for some of these other galactic legends and things because you're at this point where, you know, in this time, who knows, maybe Leviathan is super easy to get. And you're going to throw it up here or, Maybe all of a sudden Sith Eternal gets this lifter unit that's well worth putting him as your first Galactic Legend. Who knows, right? Um, the point of this guide is preparing you again. Like if I bring it to conclusion, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get to this point where you can participate in all the events going on so that way you're worth it to a guild. Because gone are the days where something like Kylo and Geonosians are going to get you into guilds. You're going to need to be able to participate in the crate raid. You're going to need to be able to participate in territory wars. You need a good GAC rank to earn additional rewards. You need these teams. And I think this is the best way to get there. Um, again, that's just my opinion. I would always look at other guides. I'd see what other people do. I'm also going to link my original farming guide there. Again, you guys can see some of the changes. Um, overarching, it's similar, right? Except that you went Kylo first, right? Overarching, it's the same we focused a little bit more on some of these early teams, but that was because with the Phoenix Squadron, right, you're able to build this Empire team so much sooner. Just now with all the changes to the game, with the way, with what's needed, I think this is the path forward. So that's my that's my opinion, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. As always, smash that subscribe button. Leave likes, leave comments. We're trying to hit 5,000. When we hit 5,000 subscribers, you guys know the drill. Wampa's going to hit Relicate on a special live stream, so hopefully... By the time that you're at this point in the video, that 
you've already subscribed because you should be if you watch this video for hold on now we've been recording for almost 40 minutes you all are amazing i love all of you may the force be with you and i'll see you guys in the next video cheers